السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شر انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد brothers and sisters tonight before i speak to you i think it important for me to make dua supplication to allah for us tonight usually whenever i speak to an audience even if there's one non muslim i like to begin with a dua that is founded in the quran ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا. O Allah, do not make us a trial for those who do not believe. Even in speaking to Muslims, we become a test and a trial for each other. I came tonight at the invitation of the Forum of Social Studies. I hope that in the next few moments. you would allow me to share with you a topic that i have taken the liberty to expand i don't want to talk about the unity of mankind i rather talk about islam as the tool for unity of mankind and what are the muslims prepared to do Everyone likes to make claims about their religion, their group, their organization. Reverend Taylor mentioned that both Islam and Christianity are proselytizing religions. That's true. We believe that our religion is correct, and therefore Muslims go out and inviting people to Islam, and Christians go out inviting people to Christianity. and the people in their various religion believe that their religion is correct that's why they're christians and jews and muslims and hindus and buddhists but our prophet muhammad alayhi salat was salam said walakin al bayna al mudi but the burden of proof is on the one who makes the claim and therefore if you claim that islam is right if you claim that judaism is right if you claim that christianity is right that hinduism is right that buddhism is right then you have to prove it because anybody can say it so tonight for a few moments i like to raise the issue and propose the thesis that islam is the tool for unity imam siraj how can you say such thing because islam seems to divide families and divide people i myself used to be a christian and now i'm a muslim How then can you say that Islam is a tool for unity when they take from the Christians and take from the Jews and take from the Hindus and take from the Buddhists and take from the agnostics and take from people who have no religion at all how then can you say Islam as a tool for unity I'll say exactly that with no hesitation at all and tell you why in a few moments I believe that there are some Muslims who don't even understand the beauty of the unifying aspect of Islam. I was in Toronto and a young Muslim spoke in front of me and he said in his speech that Islam the the latest religion. And when I got up I said brother I thank you for your wonderful speech but I like to make a small correction Islam is not the latest religion. Islam is the oldest religion. go a step further islam is the only religion but you said that islam unites mankind how can you say it's the only religion prophet muhammad peace and blessing be upon him said my example and the example of the prophets that came before me is the example of a man who built a building and the building was perfectly built and people go around the building and say how wonderful the building is how beautiful it is except there is a small brick missing in the corner he said i am that brick 
and I am Khatim and Nabiyin, and I am the seal of the prophets. Notice, this messenger doesn't come, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bringing a new religion. Islam is not something new that came into existence 1400 years ago. Islam was here when the first prophet Adam was here. That was his religion. Islam is a tool of unity of mankind. But some Muslims misunderstand. Most non-Muslims understand Islam as a unifier of mankind. We do not believe that every person will become a Muslim. We know they won't. But that's OK. My job, my responsibility as a Muslim is to invite people to Islam in a very intelligent way. And invite to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching. That's our job, our responsibility. Some people will come, others will not. But to me, as I understand Islam, if a Christian and a Jew understood the impact of Quran and Islam, literally they would jump for joy. If you understood, but we don't believe that every Christian is going to become Muslim, every Jew is going to become Muslim. Therefore, then what does Islam teach if the person doesn't convert or revert to your religion? Still, we have a a relationship between especially Ahl al-Kitab, especially people of the book, especially Christians and Jews. And I would like to talk about two aspects, one theoretically and then one practically, and then we'll finish in the allotted time, inshallah. So the Prophet ﷺ didn't come with something new. He came to continue to complete the building that was already started. This day have I perfected for you your religion. I was at uh, UCLA in Los Angeles. I gave a test to the Muslims. And then I went to the University of Toronto, gave them the same test. Went to Miami and gave the same test. Went to New York City in Australia and gave the same test. I'm going to give you the test now. Can I give you a test? Okay. I want to see how smart you are. They told me the Muslims in England are very smart. It remains to be seen. I'm going to ask a couple of questions. If you think you know the answer, just raise your hand. And what I'm telling you, you have to trust me. If I make any mistake, and the answers, all of them, can be found in Bukhari Hadith, volume number four, under the chapter NBA, the Prophets. Question number one, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said that every human being that's born is touched by shaitan, the devil. Every human being that is born at birth is touched by shaitan, the devil, except two. If you think you know the answer, raise your hand. Who are the two people? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only seven people, eight people, nine people, ten people think they know, eleven people think they know the answer. One is not sure. We'll try this, brother. The answer? Who agrees with him? He said, Isa and his mother, Jesus and his mother Mary. Who agrees? Who disagrees? Isa. Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Isa. May Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah, you got 50. The answer is. Isa alayhi salat wa salam, Jesus and his mother Mary. Kama qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Question number one. Question number two. Every human being that dies, and that's all of us. Kullu nafsin da'ika tul maut. Every soul shall taste of death. And when we are resurrected, all of us will be resurrected naked. Am I right? Right or wrong? Naked and uncircumcised. Aisha radiallahu anha, when she heard that, Ya Rasulullah, you mean to tell me men and women are going to be naked on Yom Qiyama? He said, yes, but they're naked. Trust me, brother, you won't be looking at women those days. Because the fear is so heavy. 
This is the day of judgment. You're not worried about some, how somebody look. Question number two. Who will be the first person that is dressed on the day of judgment? If you think you know the answer, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. My brother back there, yes, brother. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam. How many say Prophet Ibrahim? Right and exact, exactly. The first one to get dressed on the day of judgment is Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam. Very good. You're doing so good so far. Question number three. According to the Messenger of Allah alayhi salat wa salam, everything living will lose consciousness. Who will be the first to come into consciousness? If you think you know the answer, raise your hand. One person, two people, three, four. Yes, ma'am. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very good, but not right. <laughs> Who will be the first one to come into consciousness? Yes, brother. Prophet Musa, alayhi salatu wa salam, right. Now, you want to challenge me? Good, don't do it now. After my talk, we get the Bukhari hadith, and we look it up exactly as the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One more, and then we finish. Who had the most beloved salat prayer to Allah. If you think you know the answer, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. One sister got a hand on her mouth. Five, six, seven, eight. Yes, brother. Prophet Dawood, alayhi salat wa salam, right. Ahabu salat ilallah, Dawood. Ahabu salat ilallah, Dawood. The best fast to Allah, Prophet Dawood. And on and on and on and on. Why did I say that and what does that have to do with the unity of mankind and what does it have to do with the role of the Muslims in bringing about that unity? I want to do this in the next few moments if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses me to do it. When you study the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salat wa salam, what he did, he always referred back to the prophets that came before him. Always refer back to the prophets that came before him and always spoke about the good that they did. And as a fundamental article of faith, Muslims must believe in Rusulu and Qutub. Qutubihi wa Rusulihi. Allah's books and his prophets, all of them. Now, let me tell you something interesting. Brothers and sisters, if I ask this audience, what is the most popular name in the world, you would say? Muhammad. There's no doubt about that. Can you believe I know somebody named Abu Muhammad, Muhammad Ibn Muhammad? Love that name, Muhammad. In all over the world, the most popular name, the name Muhammad, easily, everywhere, millions and millions of people. Isn't it interesting that Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, loved and revered and respected by Christians. How many, especially white European Christians, do you know with the name Jesus? Think about it. Now watch this. How many Muslims know Muslims with the name Isa, Jesus? If you know a Muslim with the name Jesus, raise your hand. If you know two Muslims at least with the name Jesus, raise your hand. If you know three. I can't go further than that. Isa is a popular name among Muslims. Think about that. How many you know Muslim with the name Solomon, Suleiman? Dawood, David. Ibrahim, Abraham. Look at this. These people take on the names, not only of Muhammad, but they take on the names of prophets that came before them years, years, and years ago. Why? Islam is a unifier of mankind. No prophet ever, ever said that there's no prophet after me. None of them except one. Was there a prophet after prophet Noah? How do you know it? Was there a prophet after prophet Ibrahim? How do you know it? Was there a prophet after Prophet Moses? Was there a prophet after Prophet Jesus? 
And my Christian friends, if you say no, how do you know it? Did he say that I'm the last one and there will be none after me? Every prophet spoke about one coming after him, illa wahid, except one prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "La nabiyya ba'di." There is no prophet after me. Look, wa id qala Musa li kaumihi, and when Moses said to his people, wa id qala Isa bin Maryam ya bani Israel inni Rasulullah ilaykum. And when Jesus said, all children of Israel, I am a messenger of Allah to you. Now look to the Quran, Kul, O Muhammad, Kul, say, Ya Yuhannas, inni Rasulullah ilaykum jamia. Say, O mankind, I am a prophet of Allah, a messenger of Allah to all of you. So Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, comes not just as a prophet to the Arabs 1400 years ago, but he comes as a prophet to the people of UK in 1998, in Japan and China and America and Germany and all over the world. He is the last prophet. And no other prophet claimed to be the last except for him. Now, brothers and sisters, in my conclusion, how many of you Muslims believe that Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, cured those with leprosy. If you believe that, raise your hand. Good. I'm going to conduct an experiment. How many Muslims believe that Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, cured those born blind? Raise your hand. Look, I want you to look around the audience. Just keep following me. Now watch. How many Muslims in the audience believe that Jesus raised the dead by Allah's permission? Raise your hand. Look around. Now watch this. How many Muslims believe that Jesus Turn water into wine, raise your hand. How many Muslims believe it? Raise your hand. Okay, one. Anyone else? Let me tell you why Muslims didn't raise their hand. Because this book is called Musaddiq. And what it does, thanks be to Allah, it verifies all the prophets and the scripture that came before it. Notice when I asked about raising the dead and, and asked about the blindness and the leprosy, all the Muslims raised their hand. Why? Because it's in the Quran. The Quran did not say Jesus didn't do it. But because it didn't speak on it, we don't speak on it. Islam is a unifying religion. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said this, and I tried to follow it. He said, Do not verify what the people of the book say, and don't call them a liar. But rather say, we believe in Allah, and what was revealed to us, and what was revealed to you, and what was revealed to Ibrahim, and all the prophets. So some things we are quiet about, that which Allah was quiet about himself in the Quran. Now, brothers and sisters, in my conclusion, I say this to you. The more I study Islam, the more I see that Christians and Jews really should thank Allah for his last messenger, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know why? Because if you did, if they did, I believe it, that we would be united in ways, mankind would be united in ways that we've never seen before. How many of you sitting in the audience, like myself, have reverted to Islam after being in another religion? Raise your hand. Good. How many used to be Christian? Raise your hand. I got some good news for you. You know, sometimes my Muslim brothers and sisters, you know, who are born in Islam kind of, you know, brag, y'all. Yeah. Oh, born Muslim. And you know, sometimes I envy you. You know, I mean, you know, all your life reading Quran and studying Islam and and being all of that wisdom, I said, man, they're so great, so fortunate. I envy you. All you brothers and sisters born in Islam, you know, me, I, you know, I dragged into Islam after being beaten up in the dunya. Yeah, I was beaten up in the dunya. And thanks be to Allah, when I found Islam, it made me a different person. But brothers and sisters used to be Christian like me. 
double reward. Ha, ha, ha. Prophet said, whoever believes in their prophet and believer in of the Ahli Kitab and then become Muslim, Allah give them a double reward. Ha, ha, ha. It's a unifying religion. But then the beautiful thing about it, even if the Christians and Jews don't become Muslim, still we have a special relationship. And I want to close with this, brothers and sisters. Please be careful. You be an example like our Prophet was an example. We must be tolerant of people and their different religious views. I have no problem listening to a Christian and a Jew and a Buddhist and a Hindu about their religion and then to discuss it with them. Personally, I'd rather do it in private because sometimes in the public, ego comes. But I think that we should be open enough and not be afraid to let people express their view. We believe in our religion so strongly, I'm not afraid of somebody going to convince me otherwise. So let them speak and argue with them in ways that are best. I understand. Argue with them in ways that are best. I quote an ayah from the Quran. Let the subu ladina the only min duni la for your subu Allah adwan with ghayr ilm. Do not insult the gods that they worship besides Allah. Therefore, they insult Allah with ignorance. So even though they don't have the right understanding as you and I view it, don't beat them, don't insult them, and don't insult the gods that they worship. You're not trying to win the argument. You're trying to talk and, and share with them something what Allah has given to us. And then the last thing, Allah in his infinite wisdom yet gives the Muslim man permission to marry the chaste woman of the people of the book. Islam is a unifying religion. I've just given you just a taste today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. And I want to thank all of you who came. So brothers and sisters, may Allah forgive me again for anything, mistakes that I've made today. And, and I thank all of you for coming. Jazakallah khairan.